Forget tarps. This W. Brew fabric was stronger, lighter, and totally waterproof. Let me tell you something that'll make you look at your modern gear a little differently. When you think about the Second World War, you probably picture steel helmets, canvas tents, or maybe those olive drab uniforms. But you know, one of the most quietly revolutionary inventions of the war wasn't a weapon or vehicle. It was a fabric. A fabric so tough, so versatile, and so waterproof that soldiers relied on it in every corner of the world, from the jungles of Burma to the frozen ruins of Stalingrad. Today, most people have never even heard of it. We're talking about Ventile, the forgotten British material that outperformed tarps, resisted bullets of rain, and actually saved lives. This wasn't just another textile. It was a survival breakthrough that modern outdoorsmen could still learn from. Now, let's dig into what made it so special and how you can actually use the same principles to improve your own survival setup today. It all started with a desperate problem in the sky. During the early years of the Second World War, the Royal Air Force had a terrifying issue. Pilots shot down over the North Sea or Atlantic rarely survived long enough for rescue. Their wool uniforms soaked up water like sponges, dragging them under and freezing them solid. The average survival time in cold water was under 15 minutes. Britain needed a solution fast, something flexible, lightweight and utterly waterproof, yet still breathable enough for flight suits. Enter a team of textile engineers at the Shirley Institute in Manchester. They started experimenting with long-staple Egyptian cotton. Yes, cotton, the same stuff in your shirt. But they didn't weave it like ordinary fabric. They used an incredibly tight weave, packing those fibres so densely that when the material got wet, the fibres swelled and locked together, creating an impenetrable barrier. No coating, no plastic layer, no gimmicks, just raw, high-quality cotton engineered at a microscopic level. That's how Ventil was born. Once the RAF tested it, they were stunned. Pilots wearing Ventil immersion suits could survive up to 20 times longer in freezing water. 20 times! It didn't rip or degrade in salt water, and even after hours of exposure, it kept enough heat trapped inside to delay hypothermia. That one innovation saved countless airmen who otherwise wouldn't have stood a chance. The British quickly expanded its use. It became the go-to material for anti-submarine crews, paratroopers and Arctic explorers. After the war, Ventile became the quiet choice for extreme expeditions, worn by the first climbers to summit Everest, by Arctic researchers and by cold-weather special forces. All because it combined the impossible trio lightweight, breathability and near-total waterproofing. Here's where it gets fascinating for survivalists today. Unlike synthetic tarps or plastic rain gear, Ventile didn't melt near fire, it didn't crack in cold, and it didn't make noise when moved. For anyone who's ever camped or hunted in the rain, you know how rare that is. You could stay dry, silent and mobile, all while wrapped in a natural fibre. Let's talk performance. Tarps and rain jackets today often rely on plastic coatings, polyurethane, PVC or silicone, that eventually degrade, flake or lose their waterproofing. Ventile's strength was in the fabric itself. No coatings meant no peeling or delamination. The weave was its armour. 
The denser the cotton, the more it repelled water, and yet it still breathed. In survival conditions, that breathability matters more than most people realize. Moisture trapped inside clothing kills faster than the rain outside. Ventile lets sweat escape, but sealed out external water. It's why mountaineers preferred it over early nylon shells. Even today, you can still buy ventile jackets, and the material hasn't changed much in 80 years, because it doesn't need to. For practical application, if you're building a modern field kit or prepping for off-grid living, the lesson here is timeless. Invest in materials that work with nature, not against it. Cotton, in most cases, is a liability in wet environments, but not when engineered correctly. You don't have to find original RAF flight suits to benefit from this knowledge. You can, you know, integrate the same design logic into your own gear. Let's say you're setting up a field shelter. Most people throw down a plastic tarp. Instead, consider a tightly woven canvas treated with wax or natural oils. That setup will breathe, last longer, and be repairable in the field. If you're into making or modifying your own clothing, you'll want to use high-density cotton or canvas and treat it with paraffin wax. That way, you'll replicate a simplified ventile effect. Water beads on the surface, but the fabric stays pliable and quiet. Bushcrafters have, you know, rediscovered this method recently, calling it oil skin or waxed canvas. But honestly, it's directly descended from the same WWM science. Even modern outdoor brands like Fjell Raven and Hiltrek still produce vental garments because, well, nothing else quite matches it for silence, resilience and comfort. Soldiers in the 1940s trusted it with their lives, and that really tells you everything you need to know about its real-world value. Ventile's story isn't just about a fabric. It's about how wartime necessity drives genius. When materials were scarce, scientists didn't invent more plastic. Instead, they re-engineered what already existed. That mindset, working smarter with natural materials, is exactly what modern survivalists and off-grid enthusiasts can learn from. In a world flooded with synthetic gear promising miracles, Ventil is proof that natural fibres, when properly designed, can actually outperform them. It's a reminder that durability, sustainability and practicality don't have to be high-tech. They just have to be smart. So, next time you're packing your gear or testing your shelter, think like a Wabriopu engineer. Ask yourself, Will this still work if I can't replace it? Will it protect me when everything else fails? Because that's exactly how the RAF thought, and it's why Ventile remains a quiet legend among those who truly understand survival. If you found this breakdown useful, don't forget to hit subscribe and share it with fellow history buffs and survivalists. The past still holds secrets worth rediscovering. And here, at Warfield Survival, we'll keep digging them up, one forgotten innovation at a time.